So, I said for years after watching countless Apple and Android watches hit the shelves that I didn't really see myself desiring a smartwatch of any kind. I was way more into classic analog watches and was adamant that a smartwatch would only bring more distractions into my life. You know, we are already glued to our phones enough as it is and I dread to think what my actual screen on time really is. But something changed recently. My drive and motivation to work out is through the roof at the moment and I'm taking it way more seriously than I ever have done. If you've watched my uh, post-lockdown habits in 2021 video, which I'm guessing you haven't because at the time of writing this script, it sits prettily at about 162 views. But if you had, you would know that I've been fairly active over the last few years when it comes to weight training. But for the first time in years, I'm seeing real progress when it comes to my strength, my physique, and my overall health. Hitting goals that I, to be frank, never thought I would. Now, if you'd like to be a uh, oh so kind and congratulate me for being a brave, brave boy, for actually turning up to the gym consistently, then subscribing to this channel and dropping a like on this video would be a, uh, a massive encouragement. But this is not a fitness channel. We talk tech. So what actually changed? Well, reaching these new goals just simply made me want to push myself even further. I wanted to be able to accurately track what I was doing in the gym, the food that I was putting into my body, and my overall body composition. So I swallowed my pride and started talking to friends what smartwatches they would recommend. No surprise, the most common response was, uh, well, of course, the Apple Watch, which I was confident was a brilliant recommendation, especially Especially after having watched Apple's most recent September event, where they showcase both the Apple Watch Series 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra. Slight problem though, I use this, an Android. And I'm pretty certain that given Apple's tightly walled garden, that pairing an Apple Watch to a OnePlus it's not going to be a happy marriage, is it? So I'm left with a few options. Now, I wanted something a bit more well-rounded than just a Fitbit. So my attention was brought to the likes of Garmin, the incoming and well now released Google Pixel Watch and the Samsung Galaxy line of watches. After doing a little bit of research or, you know, watching some YouTube reviews, I settled on this, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, jumping right into the deep end. I did debate just the regular Galaxy Watch 5, but the design, durability, and the fact that I'd probably be using this for a few years. I convinced myself that the uh, extra pennies would probably be worth it in the long run. But I'm sure you're less interested in why I chose to get a smartwatch and more importantly, what I actually think about it. Especially coming from someone who's never worn a smartwatch before. So let's start with what I really like about it. First and foremost, I love the size of this thing. I've seen a lot of people complaining that they feel that the 45 millimeter design is just way too big and chunky. Either I just have gargantuan wrists, which I doubt because let's be real, I'm not a particularly big guy, but I don't find it too big at all. One of the biggest features, I guess, that I was adamant about was I wanted a circular design. I wanted it to be able to almost blend in as just a normal watch and not look like a wrist computer, which unfortunately I think the Apple Watch tends to lend itself to. Just not necessarily an aesthetic I want for myself. The thicker outer bezels and recessed screen give the watch a far more rugged and durable feel and ensues some confidence that the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro will come off better against some knocks and hopefully not get scratched so easily. I've heard from a lot of people that they really miss the rotating physical bezels from models of previous years, but it's not something that I've been particularly fussed about and having not ever had it in order to miss it, I, th I think I'm gonna be all right. A big factor for all smartwatches, especially for someone actively tracking stats, is of course battery life. I will clarify that I don't sleep with my watch on, but I do wear it all day otherwise and track my gym sessions or about four to five times a week. After having used the watch for about three weeks now, I find myself having to charge the watch every two to two and a half days. However, as I don't sleep with the watch on, which you wouldn't really want to because of the size and weight of the thing, I typically charge it overnight anyway. To pair with the battery life, the screen brightness is fantastic. I've never felt like the screen needed to be brighter in well-lit conditions, nor have I ever felt like having the brightness set on high has ever significantly impacted the battery life. The onboarding demonstration when turning the watch on for the first time is particularly useful, especially for someone who's 
I've got no idea what they're doing with it. Going over what all the gestures do, pairing to your main device, what the functions of the action buttons on the side are, and setting up your tracking applications. Something that a noob like me would get a lot out of. Now, I'm not the most well-versed when it comes to specs in terms of smartwatches. I'm not going to pretend to be either. So, here on the screen now are the internal specs for your viewing pleasure. Enjoy. With that out of the way, I'm very much aware that most of the internals are carried over from last year's model, but they seem to be doing the trick. Animations are smooth and sleek. I haven't noticed any obvious frame drops or stuttering when navigating the menus, and the watch is more than capable of anything I want to throw at it. Third party integration so far has been excellent with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. With the options to install apps such as Google Fit, Google Wallet, My Fitness Pal, and even Spotify. The Spotify app allows you to control playback from the watch itself, meaning you can leave your phone off to the side, connect your headphones to the watch via Bluetooth 5.2, and listen to music remotely. I found this particularly useful at my local climbing center where mobile phones are not allowed on the climbing floor. This still allows me to listen to some music or catch up to a podcast while climbing a wall. As this is a Samsung device, of course our good friend Bixby makes a reappearance. Bixby on this device is typically triggered by using the main action button. However, Samsung are kind enough to allow you to remap that button and reset the default assistant to Google Assistant if you want, which I think most people will want to do. When it comes to the App Store or more apps available to the watch. From what I've gathered, the selection is a lot more limited in comparison to the Apple Watch, where notifications from apps such as Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat all still come through on your Apple Watch. Given that these are the kind of apps that I would be blocking on this device anyway, this doesn't really seem much of a drawback. The main fitness and productivity apps that I would find most useful are all readily available and integrate quickly. One of the main features that I have enjoyed and found particularly useful is a lot of the quick access widgets available when swiping left on the watch, allowing me to see my fitness tracking, food intake, workouts, and body metrics all very quickly. These are all completely customizable with most apps having a widget available. Alongside that, navigating is a breeze. I was initially put off smartwatches because the Apple Watch app screen just seemed so messy and overstuffed and just counterintuitive. However, Galaxy Watch 5 Pro's Wear OS has the apps all organized in a really easy to use column system, which can easily be rearranged in the watch's companion app on a mobile phone. This companion app, Galaxy Wear, will allow you to easily customize and tweak your watch faces with ease. Speaking of watch faces, there are plenty to choose from, ranging from minimalistic, my personal preference, to incredibly stats heavy. These can all be edited to fit your preference, and you can even change the complications, as Wear OS is calling them, to match your individual use case. And if these aren't to your liking, you fussy fuck, there is a plethora of third-party applications that integrate nicely with the device. This allows you to use watch faces from a whole range of sources. There's got to be something you don't like so much, I hear you say. Well, yeah. It wouldn't be a Samsung device without that sweet Samsung bloatware. Which I guess is fair enough given that they did build the damn thing. I'll start off with something that to most people, and that is the Samsung Health app. Now, hear me out, it's good. It's actually really good to be fair. I use it quite a lot to monitor body comp, heart rate, stress level, and sleep. However, it's fitness tracking when it comes to something like weightlifting is fucking tedious. You have to individually select each exercise by sets, reps, and how much time it's going to take for every single exercise. Now, I know, okay, if I'm doing six exercises over the course of, let's say, an hour, that shouldn't be too much of an ask to do. And it's not, but it does get really annoying and sets each exercise as its own workout. Also, it doesn't have every single exercise that someone doing weightlifting would need. It would just be easier just to punch in a generic weightlifting session and for it to just then track your heart rate and whatever else it needs to do. Also, Samsung Health sneakily locks some features behind a wall. That wall requiring you to connect to some other Samsung device of some kind, be it a phone or a tablet. Nice and sneaky, but I, I get it. Full integration to an ecosystem. I see what you're doing, Samsung. Now. I have a OnePlus 8 Pro, not a Samsung, big ups. Thankfully, I have an old S8 knocking around and grant me access to those additional features. However, 
as I mentioned, I have found personal limitations with the Samsung Health app and have instead migrated over to Google Fit, which fits my needs much closer. The Photos app. Who's actually using it and why is it there? The less we talk about it, the better, but it, it's completely useless. Oh yeah. Going back to watch faces, there is a good chunk of Galaxy watch faces that are simply unavailable unless you're using a Samsung Galaxy phone. Again, I get why you're doing it. I'm not mad. It's just some of them are nice and I want them for me. But really, that's about all I don't like. Real nitpicky stuff. Yeah, sometimes the size of the watch can get in the way of certain movements in the gym. But overall, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is kind of ticking all the boxes for me. It's allowing me to keep on track of my fitness goals. It forces me to take accountability and actually go outside and exercise even when I don't want to. And it also holds me responsible for what I'm putting into my body. It is a constant reminder of what I need to be doing to stay on track, which is what drove me to buy it in the first place. It's also really nice to have stats and data constantly generated in order to show that I am making progress in the right direction. It's, it's a great motivation booster. So, is a smartwatch a necessary purchase? No, ab absolutely not. But it is one that I'm glad I've made. And I'd recommend this watch to anyone who's asking. Anyway, I've gone on for a while now. I'm going to go. I'll catch you in the next one. I regret to announce this is the end. I'm going now. I bid you all a very fond farewell. <laughs>